But yeah, when you do the experiments, it turns out entanglement is real. And, and that then leads to the conclusion ultimately that local realism is false. And it's, it's, it's truly stunning. But if you think about it in terms of a headset, as you said, I render, like in the virtual reality Grand Theft Auto, I render the Camaro when I look and I garbage collect it when I look away. I, I just delete it. I render particles, I render space time itself. Space time itself doesn't exist except as a data structure um, that we use. And so it's now in terms of a simulation, I, I should make a distinction between what we're saying here and a different kind of notion of simulation that Nick Bostrom has. So there's a simulation theory of Nick, uh, Nick Bostrom and others where, where they you know, say, look, this isn't real. It could be just some computer geek that did a program and we're just creatures in the simulated world in this program. And it turns out that that computer geek it's herself is just a, a program from someone else at a lower level. And there's this whole hierarchy uh, all the way down until you get to some base programmer. But they assume that the base level is a space-time world. So they're still stuck on the headset. That, that kind of simulation theory isn't thinking big enough. You have to let the, and they're also assuming that, that programs can create consciousness, which is another story. No one's been able to show how, how that's even possible. So they're just not thinking big enough. You've got to let go of space-time at the base of the entire hierarchy of simulations to really get where the physicists have gone. Space-time itself is merely a headset. So, so the standard simulation theory isn't thinking big enough. It's still stuck in the headset. In, say, Grand Theft Auto, right? I look over, I'm playing with somebody who's you know, in Canada and somebody else is in Europe and someone else is in China. We're all playing a remote version of it. And, virtual reality and I look over and I see a red Porsche to my right and so I say is there a red Porsche on my right and the guy in China says oh yeah I see a red Porsche and the guy in Canada agrees and the guy in Europe agrees as well so of course each of them is rendering their own red Porsche so there is some reality that's coordinating all of these perceptions right so the guy in Canada didn't see a red Porsche until he looked but when he looked um, there was the this whole world you know, of circuits and software that you don't see, there's some supercomputer that's coordinating the whole thing. If the, there's a supercomputer that's, that's taking the inputs from like your headset, what, what direction are you looking with your headset? Maybe you've got a bodysuit, so it's looking at your arm movements and so forth, and it's feeding all that into a supercomputer where it's got a model of the game, and in that model, there's some red portion model. Of course, there's no red portion in the computer. And it knows then how to coordinate and send the photons to your headset in Canada and my headset in Irvine and someone else's headset in, in China so that we have this notion of a persistent reality of a Porsche, even though individually, for each one of us, um, local realism is false. The Porsche doesn't even exist until I render it. And there's no red Porsche inside the supercomputer. So that's sort of the idea is that, that space time is just a headset realm to explore that's at least as complicated, more complicated as like the supercomputer is to my little headset. The headset is sophisticated, it's beautiful technology, but the supercomputer is, you know, a really, really powerful thing. And the same thing will be true of space-time. It's just our headset, but if we look beyond that headset, we're going to, you know, be finding a realm that's far more complicated. So in some sense, science up till now has only studied our headset. We've studied inside space and time. Mm -hmm. We're taking our first baby steps to start to explore. We, we've, we've cut our teeth in science on, on studying our headset. We learned the tools in the last three or 400 years about experiments and clean mathematical theories and the loop between experiments and theories. But we thought we were studying objective reality. We were studying our headset. But now we have the tools to actually take a first step beyond space-time and start to find structures beyond space-time and their projection back into space-time.